one of the technical speakers. <laughs> the man who taught me how to play harmonica was my grandfather. I refer to him as Papa. He's one of my best friends. He's one of my mentors. And he is one of those people that I am proud to say is in my contact list on my cell phone. Who are the people in your contact list on your cell phone? Who are the people that you might consider some of your best friends? Who do you appreciate? And what are some conversations that you get to initiate with these people? By the end of this short talk, I will have given a completely different context to your personal list of contacts. But back to my grandfather. Papa, as a youthful 90-year-old, decided to take a trip out to the west coast of Canada this past summer because he had some people to see. He had some family members who he hadn't connected with in years. And most importantly, there was a big anniversary party that he wanted to be a part of. He didn't just want to show up and eat the food. He wanted to show up and acknowledge these important people. He wanted to show up and appreciate these loved ones. He wanted to put on the suspenders that he wears every day, complete with toothpick in mouth, because he had prepared a song on his harmonica to play that night at that anniversary party. He went to his go-to classic default papa performance song on the harmonica, You Are My Sunshine. Now when we think of this song, You Are My Sunshine, it might take us back to a time when we were much shorter. Perhaps it makes us think about being in the elementary school years, maybe even high school. And as we have students tuning in on the World Wide Web, I'm grateful because I get to spend my days, I devote myself to traveling this country just speaking to students and learning from students who I consider to be the best teachers because I ask the same question everywhere I speak. If I'm on a university or college campus, I will ask, who do you appreciate and why? And these students are slightly reluctant then their hands will go up and they will share. A professor who has helped me with my exams or this person that I'm currently dating. Maybe it'll work out. They're great. I go into high schools and I ask the same question. Who do you appreciate and why? And in all these high schools, I get the overwhelming response of crossed arms, shrugging shoulders, and that silent voice in their own minds of, who wants to know? <laughs> and there is a little bit of a hurdle to get over, but eventually one hand creeps up from the sea of students in these high schools, and they're like, I got one. And when that first high school student goes out of their way to say, I'm thankful, for the person whose locker is next to mine. Because even though we don't talk to each other too much, 
They are the company that I get to spend five minutes of my day with every day before I go to my first period class. And then those reluctant hands in the crowd slowly begin to creep up even more. And then I can't stop the number of students who are in the most developmental years of their social lives from saying how grateful they are for certain people. In elementary schools, I ask, who do you appreciate? Why? They don't even hesitate. Their hands are up, both of them. They don't even know their names, but they know that they want to appreciate someone else. And they say things like, oh, I appreciate my mom. She doesn't get me in trouble. Oh, I appreciate my dad. He's, he's typically nicer than my mom when I have to get in trouble. <laughs> and it's the young ones, the kindergartens. When we get to work with them, it's a totally different experience when we ask, who do you appreciate and why? First of all, the word appreciate is a little complex when you're four. So it's more like, who do you think is awesome? And all their hands are up, both hands, they're bouncing, they're moving, they're singing, they're being four. And when we pick certain students to share, they're not even ready. They're like, oh, me, right. Who do I think is awesome? Him because they're the closest person to them in physical space. We make appreciation, giving thanks into this thing that is like a big deal that we wait until the end of our life or until these big milestones to share with others. Oh, it's a graduation, so I should thank someone. Oh, it's a wedding, so I should appreciate someone. Oh, it's the end of someone's life, let's get together and let's have those conversations we never have had and likely should have before now. Back to your list of contacts and what's possible with those people in your cell phone or on your computer or just in whatever way you keep a list of contacts. We typically use our phones, send emails because we need something. I challenge you to spin it around. Who are these people in your phone? Who are these people in your social database? And what is it that they might need? And how can you help with that? And this is about to get very real and very unplanned. I'm about to call someone. I'm going to put it on speakerphone so you can all hear. This person might be watching right now, so I apologize in advance if this will overwhelm and confuse you. <laughs> but I'm now going to call Papa because perhaps there are things that can be said more frequently that we don't go out of our way to do on a consistent basis. I'm guilty. I just think this is a new way to approach the power of technology. If we get voicemail, that's OK, too, because then at some other point in time, when my grandfather hears this message, he can hear it on his own time. He can save it, listen to it whenever he would like. If he picks up, I don't even know what's going to happen. <laughs> Popeye will speak loudly because he's somewhat hard of hearing. Yes, high schoolers, this is real. <coughs> Papa, it's Blake. Yeah, I'm having a problem cutting in. That's OK. It's recording. We can watch it another time. But I have a quick update. Do you have 30 seconds? Yeah. OK. I'm calling because, like I've said to you a few times as we're playing pool at the pool hall, I really appreciate the time we get to spend together and hanging out and having conversations. And most importantly, I really think you are to blame for teaching me a lot of my musical skills, both with harmonica or guitar. And in case I don't say it enough, thank you for teaching me to be musical and for making me keep it up, even though maybe sometimes there's other work to be done. So I just want to call and say thanks, and we'll talk about how to get you to watch this video at some other point in time. So Papa, in case I don't say it enough, I love you. I'm blushing because feelings make me awkward and everyone else. So, any last words before I go, Papa? Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> now, I'm up here 
My heart's beating fast. You're sitting there. You don't even know my grandfather. Yet when that phone rang, your faces were like, And people watching on the internet, or people who have had this video sent to them at some point in the future, because it's like, oh, I appreciate this person. I'm going to send it to them. You are probably thinking, who can I call? Who can I reach out to? Who can I emotionally connect with because of the power of these tools known as communication devices? What is possible with all these people in one place and the ability to just connect to them, reach out to them, remind them about milestones in life that you have shared together. Maybe it was the school days, maybe it was the work days, maybe it was graduation, maybe it was those tough times with your friends and your family, I don't know. What I do know is that every time I make these phone calls to my world, I get a huge door into your world. And that's powerful stuff, even though it's just this basic little thing that takes three minutes and my grandpa is probably confused, but hey, love the guy. And I carry this emergency kit with me at all times. I guess it's like a first aid kit. It's a box of thank you cards. And it's funny how when you carry these things with you, Whatever that might be. If it's a pencil, you look for places to write. If it's food, you look for people to feed. I carry thank you cards in case I have gratitude emergencies where I need to be like, <gasps> have I thanked that person for the thing they did years ago which has shaped me into the person I am today? I'm not saying go out and start carrying cards. What I am saying is that it's so basic and simple yet powerful when you make the time to say, hey, in case it hasn't come up, thanks. Whichever way is suitable for you, writing a card, sending a text message, sending an email, doing it, God forbid, in person. My gosh, that is awkward. Hey, I'm just here to say, you're great. Maybe we should hug. Okay, I'll send you an email. Okay, good. So as we wrap this up, this is not a tribute to the guy watching back home who goes by the name of Papa. I do this because I can tell just by looking at you that there's someone in your mind, there's a person in that list of contacts that is resonating inside of you. And this right here is the most basic, most simple way I know how to say thanks to Papa say thanks to people who have helped raise me, and to remind you to say thank you and to show people what's possible when you appreciate those in your world who have helped shape you. Here we go. <clears throat> Welcome to the campfire that is totally safe. This one goes out to the high schoolers and everybody else. For my sunshine, my only sunshine, you make me happy when skies are gray. And if I know, dear, how much I love you, please don't take my sunshine away. One more time. You are my sunshine, my only someone for the end of today. <laughs>